Hello world, my name is Bex and I am a library and information science student and I read this book in September. It's now getting a bit into October but I read this in September and I thoroughly enjoyed it and there are several things within this book that I kind of feel like are very much speaking to me as a future librarian. The characters, they aren't always or they aren't very, or always very likable. Like sometimes you get like sympathy for them, but they are very, very much motivated by um, serving themselves, like serving their own needs. Like the their motives aren't always the right ones. They're willing to make selfish and self-serving choices for their own gain. And some and that's something that I will get into soon um, in the more spoilery like discussion of the book because I will get into it um, um, and at the at the core of the book isn't doesn't have very much action which again like I like um, I don't like very much action but when there is action which there is action and I'm sure there will be more action in following books but when there are actions the actions are more like you know um, oh What's he doing? Like, no, I'm very bad at explaining this. Like, I've, I've been trying to figure out a good way to explain. Like, it's more like what happens on the inside and the character development through the fight. Like, seeing, um, like, how the actions propel them forward. As you know, that's the type of action that I can get behind. And then the book, I know that I... I I watched the book of Leo, her review, and she is a, like she has a different reading style than me. So if you're not like have my if you don't have my reading style, and look at her video, you might get a different idea of the book. But um, I'm not a very visual reader, uh, and I rarely picture what I read in my head, which is you know strange. Like a lot of people like wonder like why are you reading if you can't picture things in your head but for me it's much more about the emotions of the book and the journey of the characters are going through through the emotions um and i don't really um see the like the furnishings of lights of landscapes the facial features and those sort of things don't mean a lot to me because i don't really see them in my head um and this book apparently like i don't notice this but apparently it doesn't have a lot of like visual descriptors of how the space looks so if you need that to like get into the book and see what's happening that might be something that um uh, could like be a detractor for you um but for me like i'm a person who's just like very much accept that this is how it is you you tell me like in certain aspects the telling aspect works for me um, but for other people, like, you can't, like, tell. You know what I mean. So, um, again, you might be a visual reader and that will lead to different, like, different emotions and or different experience for you while reading this book. Um, but there are instances in the book where you just, like, you have to accept what is. And there are things that happen off screen, off screen, off book, uh, off page. Um, and you don't get to see them happening and you don't get to see like the full explanations of how they happen. And again, I'm kind of like okay with that <laughs> because I am not really a fan of reading all these tactical aspects of how things happen. And it's possible that Olivia Blake is the same and that is why she wrote it the way she wrote it because I'm like, I don't want to figure know the science behind how x was made if you read the book you know that x is yeah <laughs> so I, I can't be bothered with learning those things i just like skim through it and then go find the important part about the characters through it but um yeah yeah but it's time to get into the more spoilery section of this video and um As a somewhat near future librarian, hearing about a book that was about the Library of Alexandria was like, yeah, you know, I, I, 
I want to read that book. Um, the Library of Alexandria was, of course, the greatest library of all time. It existed around 2,300 years ago and forward. Um, and the common thing, the common belief, belief is that, I can't speak. Uh, the common belief is that it was like consumed and destroyed in a fire around 83 BC before current time um, measurement. <laughs> um, and this is like kind of the presumption that this book is built upon. And the idea was that a massive amount were destroyed and um, while the library was in full years. Um, the book, however, does get quite a few things right about the library as it existed and functioned. There is like a mention in the book of how each new round of initiate is brought into the society that the library is able to expand its collection. And I feel like this is like the Library of Alexandria as it existed um, it would expand its collection not just through like travel and active buying of scrolls throughout the city and the world, but when um, like a ship would dock in Alexandria, they would go onto the ship and search the ship for uh, any scrolls or anything that would be then go to like if they found a scroll no matter its state of incompleteness or how it looked like it could be partially destroyed they would take it to the library of alexandria and someone would copy it and then they will give the copy back to the original owner which you know it's pretty shady ptolemy the third shady <laughs> and then um so like they expanded through people, through conquest and similar. So, like, it, it felt like that was pretty, like, interesting. It isn't exactly how it happens in the book, but, like, that is how new um, content would come to the Library of Alexandria. But, um... <laughs> the Atlas Six, uh, they select um, scholars or people to become scholars of the Alexandrian society, but in the time of the library was like started, founded um, in Alexandria, Ptolemy I invited scholars to Alexandria to study like with full lodging. They got full pay, they got food, they got everything. They lived a very posh, very nice life. And it was a pretty sweet gig for them. Uh, um, and like this tradition of like scholarly study with exclusive entry is honored by the book they there were are incredible discoveries that took place in this library hundreds of years before they would be rediscovered uh, like the steam engine <laughs> again like this berry of discovery is part of the book and it's an undeniable like that is the part of the legacy of the library of alexandria and what it was like so it's, it's of course like this would like, continue like to flourish throughout the centuries if the library was kept in like the way that it is in the book. Another like fascinating detail for me uh, reading um, like the Atlas Six is that it pays homage in a very clear way that scholars were a part like the scholars that were a part of the library. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the scholars that were part of the librarian society were just scholars and not teachers they weren't there to spread knowledge they were there to study it so like everyone who came to the library to study they like they studied it for personal consumption it wasn't meant to be spread throughout the world they they were there to like learn not to learn and then go and teach other people um i and then blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Wind about. Um, so, as I said, like the library wasn't destroyed in this fire, like around 48 BC, as it was believed well, like, when Julius Caesar came and sieged Alexandria. Um, now it's believed that only a part of the library was destroyed. Originally, like the library is believed that it was part of a museum, so it wasn't a separate structure, it was a part of the museum. And this museum was largely untouched by this fire. There were a few scrolls, quite a few scrolls destroyed then, but it wasn't like the whole library. I was rather like it fizzled out this library and the society around it, because by the time that Julius Caesar had arrived, the library wasn't the same center for scholars as it had once been, because Ptolemy the Eighth 
had like had forced many scholars to leave Alexandria. And for other people, they were more amenable for scholarly activity, like for example, Rome. Um, and then the rise of Christianity meant that science and literature weren't valued the same way to the city anymore. And then became came the lynching of Hypatia in 415. What do you call it in English? Um, current time. <laughs> um, and then that was around the time that Library of Alexandria had come to an end already. It kind of like just fizzled out. Um, and there were fires that then destroyed it. But by the time like that happened, it was just, it was gone already. Then we have the second theme that I also found very interesting in the book. And as the librarian, I will become one day a far away day. And that is the access to knowledge. Like, I wished this was a bigger theme in the book um, because I feel like it's just a central ideology of libraries as well as a huge theme of the book. And my feeling, like, I feel like this probably will become, like, a big thing uh, in the future books, or I very much hope so. Um, but I've kind of feel like the book was kind of like clumsy in the way it asks questions about who gets access to the knowledge and who gets to keep be the keeper of knowledge and I understand like again this is the first book in a series um but I feel like the question wasn't asked loudly or boldly enough and it kind of like disappeared into everything else um let's see I think I maybe highlighted a part where they discussed this They kind of like discuss it through our, towards the end of the book. Like there are this um, enemy, um, I'm just trying to see here, um, enemy, la, 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 the forum. Like they are trying to like come in and challenge this view that they are having ab about the Alexandrian society. Like the knowledge should be open. So that's kind of like the, why I feel like it's more of a central theme because that clash, like I feel like that is <laughs> but yeah um for like for some of the characters it's kind of like an obvious choice that they want access to knowledge and they're willing to cut everyone else off from the knowledge if they have to do it like they're even willing to kill for the knowledge and like some of the people you kind of like you go through their motivations of why they are willing to get there for Reina it's very obvious like why she is willing to do what she is willing to do because it's from the beginning of the book towards the end like she is very like her motivations are like the same all the way through um and like maybe a bit altered possibly no not really like she is very um consistent that that's the word that i'm looking for she's a very consistent character you can see her going from a to point b without any problem and then you have libby and her kind of view is also like you get 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 to go through it for her and then you have nico who has his own motivations which aren't like they are selfish but they're also not selfish like they're both <laughs> um so in, and but then it came to Tristan and then it came to Marisa and then it came to Callum and I just couldn't really fully figure out why they wanted to be there so bad. Especially what good Callum. are the archives like, when only a small percentage of the world's mag magical Tristan population Marisa, can like ever learn from them? For their These artifacts and contained like in like this that kind of like ties into their personalities to the whole more. Of but then the you have Callum, world. who is just like very much doesn't care about anything doesn't like he i don't even know why he's there in the first place and i never could fully figure out why he was there because it was more like because he can that's why he's there and i don't like that motivation in the character like if, i f don't like it as like motivation in a character and that's the me thing probably but um like I don't see why he would be willing to willing to kill to stay. Maybe he would have left if he just knew that 
hey, they're going to kill someone and I can leave. I, <laughs> it's not relevant here. <laughs> um, but characters, they, some of the characters, they question like briefly of whether the knowledge should be. Um, so the characters are introduced to this idea that uh, this question of knowledge, should it be rewarded to only a few or should all reap the benefits of knowledge? Like, should a select few, like, only be, be able to reap the benefits of the knowledge and then rule the world with it? Um, like, the scholarly, the scholarly and a select, the scholarly and educated elite, it takes on, like, a completely a whole new look here. Because um, if you look at the people who are selected, like even the people who have a quote unquote rough childhood are now in extremely privileged positions or about to enter into extremely privileged positions, um, or they would be there if they were to desire it. Parisa is basically the only exception to this. And even that is like barely true. Um, so they are selecting the elite based on an even more elite like it's like an oligarchical wet dream <laughs> the, the idea that a closed society keeping resources like of under such secrecy is kind of like an antithesis to my own values of information freedom which is like why i want this <laughs> story to like continue going on this thread in the following book or and however more book th books there are like the forum is the word, one group that works against it, and they share my belief on um, free knowledge and the more like democratic democratic view of scholarly research. Like the Alexandrian Library and like the society keeps like the old traditions of scholarly research being available avail available <laughs> to only uh, select elites, um, and that was kind of like. That was how it was before, but now that more people have access to studying beyond childhood, you can go to university, you can read, you can do maths and everything like that. Um, like that is that view has changed, and Olivia Blake, like she created a world that is very static. They've kept in the old traditions, and they are willing to change. And like, yeah, that checks out. There's an elite people ruling the society and of course they want to keep this information as the elite because it protects their own status as the elite the rich the oligarchical few so yeah that's one more thing so we've got these group of characters that are given entry to a society with unlimited knowledge and they all agree to Agree to it, like agree to accepting their position there without considering why this knowledge isn't available to everyone. Like the classic, the classic reply in the book, like they say it is that not everyone can handle it, and it will it could go in the wrong hand. Too much knowledge could like, do damage, etc., 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 and then enters Ezra. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately. I don't see this book going in a way that I want it. Like, I, this isn't going to go the way that you think. Um, I think it will probably be kind of like a misanthropic ending where, like, too much knowledge will literally set the world on fire. And I really hope that that isn't the case because <laughs> I'm tired. I don't want to hear it. I don't want it. La 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 la. <laughs> but yeah, that's the book from. That's the book, yeah. Those are my thoughts on The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I gave it four stars, uh, which might confuse some people because I pretty I kind of like trashed it. Maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. It was pretty good read. A good read. I recommend it. But don't get too like like don't get go into it thinking like this is the best best book that you will ever read. Maybe it will be for you, but um, it's a solid book, and I'm looking forward to the next one. So yeah, if you enjoyed, why don't you like, like, comment, subscribe? I don't know where it is. Um, 
and hopefully I will be making more videos more frequently. I'll see about that. But um, yeah.